Creativity is an addiction. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity. Totally uncut because we all make mistakes. So why not turn it into a tool? This is Arrow Unplugged. Hey, it's Arrow, and this is Vocal Defrag. This is where we ask the questions and we question the answers. We're usually talking from the trail. I do a transition walk, and that transition walk is the opportunity to study the transitions that we all go through. People don't do that. We just accept life for what it is, but we don't understand the changes that we're evolving with, and therefore we place blame on things that really don't need that accusation. Ask the questions. Question the answers. That's what vocal defragging is all about. I do it in a daily writing journal, and I do it when we're out here on this path, which I'll be out on the path here in just a matter of moments. But I I wanted to really step into a thought that hit me a little bit earlier this morning while daily writing, which I've been doing for 29 years. The words were... We need you to speak into our hearts with authentic words because 99% of us only hear our monsters. You know, being a multi-layered daily writer, I openly admit that most of what makes it to the page is nothing more than a battle cry from my monsters. They are seeking an outlet and find it in these collected chapters of Spilled Ink. Where do your monsters find their way on your path? I'm asking you. Because really, who is doing the speaking for you? What is the monster's name? Have you identified it? Is it a pet? I mean, seriously. I mean, not like as in a dog or a cat. But we tend to take care of our monsters and we listen to them because we think they're authoritative figures. What we need to do is we need to face our monsters and say, no, there's a higher power. There's a better decision. I need to make a greater choice in order to silence these monsters. This goes on for a very long time, talking about the monsters that we're listening to. And I know it gets a little bit religious in the daily writing, but the thing is, is that I do openly admit in public, as well as in my writing, that I am not alone, that God has not turned his or her back. I'm only saying that the voices that determine where the majority of us plant our next step and worry are that of our creation, dealing with them requires a relationship with something that is much greater than who we are. That's going to be our subject today. When we take this walk on this path, a transition walk, we need you to speak into our hearts with authentic words because 99% of us only hear our monsters. I'll see you out on the path. All right, man, we're out here on this transition walk. Transition walks are so important because it puts us with nature, the universe, the atmosphere, what is right now. Big heavy subject today because it deals with hearing that authentic voice in our hearts because 99% of the time we're only listening to our monsters. I am not the only one on this one. We all have mental monsters and we all base everything that we do on the presentation that that monster is always willing to draw for us. All we want is something authentic placed in our heart so that we can silence the monsters. How do you silence your monsters? What are you taking? What are you sniffing, toking? What are you doing? I try to write. I have, I have so many journals. I try to silence those monsters by giving them a voice on, on paper. And today, in my defrag writing, I actually ask the question, do you think your writing is keeping the ghosts alive? The monsters. By writing about how I feel and how I'm trying to release different things, are we keeping our ghosts alive? When we post on social media, you keeping that ghost alive? Oh, I read your stuff. Oh my God. I see your videos that you post on TikTok. I hear it. There is so much going on in our personal lives, but we don't know what is authentic. What is that one voice that we need to hear so that we can find our circle of hope, trust, faith? And I'm not talking about religion here. I'm talking about survival. What are you doing? And that's the reason why I created Defrag in November of 2017. And because I was talking about it so much with other creative people on my podcast, they're going, I've never heard of this before. I thought, dude, you got to do something about this. If people have never heard of vocal defragging, plant the seed, man. Get them out on a transition walk and have them just speak into a smartphone and sit there and understand where they are. Well, how does that begin? That right there. Ask the question 
question the answer. And today, while writing, that was a big subject that was planted on that page. What is speaking with an authentic voice in your heart? And when it does appear there, 99% of every one of us are listening to our monsters and not the authentic voice. How do we get to a point like that? How do we know what is and what isn't an authentic voice? I believe the answer to that is your interpretation of what is authentic. But is that authentic voice a monster? Sure, I do my church thing on Sundays. Sure, I read my motivational books. I talk with all of these people that talk about stress and anxiety. And I take from them little tricks of the trade. But are they the authentic voice? Where is that one place that you need to visit every day that's going to say, Hey, you don't need to have that monster in your, in your belly today. Put that monster away. That monster, we'll turn it into something creative a little bit later on, but not today. Speaking directly into your heart with an authentic voice. Now, some people, especially those that, that study the Word of God, will tell you that they're waiting for God to speak directly to them. Lord knows I've seen a lot of preachers say, God told me this. God told me that. Now, I have said that there are things that I feel in my heart that I believe that are very universal. But I'm not the one that's going to say, well, God spoke to me. Well, if he did, it wasn't in human words. It was in a feeling, an interpretation, the receiving was it authentic? I'm the only one that can answer that question. Because somebody else might come by and go, yeah, okay, okay. Nah, don't believe it, dude. Don't believe it. And that's one of the toughest things about where we all stand, not only today, but for your parents, their parents, and the parents before them. Every generation has had to face those moments. What is the authentic voice? Do you even listen to your voice when you're speaking? Do you ever go back and read what you have put on your social media? I'm very guilty of one big mistake. And that is, I'll put my words out there to come back the next day going, oh, You stupid fool. Why, why would you be that honest on your Facebook? When in reality, all you want to do is just create content. You want to share the experience. I think it's because when it comes to social media, we want to belong. We want to feel like that we belong to something. And it's a human need to either be liked or disliked because some people will just take you on or they'll ghost you. They'll, they'll take that friendship and they'll wad it up and throw it in the trash can. But is it an authentic voice? And are you sharing your authentic voice when you post that selfie? What is the authentic voice? That's the question. Now, when you find your answer, let's go ahead and question that too. My authentic voice could be the writer. It's not the podcaster. I've written about this for 29 years, that I didn't get into radio to be a radio person. I got into radio because the writer wanted a stage. He wanted to be heard. He wanted to be in a place that affected other people's mind, body, and soul in a very positive way. That's the writer who found that voice. And I truly believe that's what the podcasting is as well. It's the writer. So therefore, is the writer the authentic voice? I don't want to go that route. And the reason being is because the writer doesn't always have a positive bone in his body. The writer is just very upfront, blunt, and honest. So now I ask the question, now that I've given you the answer, how do you know God isn't that way or the universe? That they're going to look at you going, dude, you kind of suck today. Can, can you shape up just a bit? I mean, we have to have mistakes in life in order to get greater things. And from those mistakes, better things are created. But man, I'm going to stand right here and I'm going to call your ass out. The authentic voice. But is it self-abuse when that authentic voice is trying to get inside your mind, body, and soul? More importantly, your decision-making. What is your authentic voice? When you identify with it, question it. I have this, this big vision of who I think God is. I think that it's a relationship. Does that make it the authentic voice? A relationship. That means two. That means do we have to keep it personal or can we share it? You know what happens when you share that kind of stuff. People become judgmental of what you're doing. Now, the authentic voice of the person inside your friend circle 
is giving you direction and making you feel like, God, why do I even think like this? That authentic voice. What is keeping you from being you? Is it you? Is it a family member? My sister, I love her to pieces. We had some good times, but I'll bet you we had more bad times than we had good times. But it didn't mean that I was going to walk away. She was very judgmental and always filled with accusation that I somehow, some way, would do something. And her reaction was always going to be negative. She was because I said. And I would be, I need to stop doing this. I mean, all I'm doing is I'm leaning into a conversation because I want to have that, that perfect family kind of a vibe. But you stop to realize that, is there really such a thing as a perfect family? There's the question. What's the answer? Okay, now you have to question the answer. I don't have a perfect family, but I do have enough love in my heart for my family. Love, that's not like friendship love. It's a deeper kind of love. But it's not the kind of love that I have for my wife of 30 years. That's a universal, a galaxy, all its own kind of love. The question would have to come from, what is it that I was saying that she wasn't receiving correctly? You can say the same thing about what you're doing on social media and or in your circles at work. What are you saying that's keeping you from enjoying what it is that you think that you are? And if you're not getting to where you think you need to be, the question would be, why? What is it that's being mixed up in this gigantic bowl of sugar and milk and flour? Put some chocolate chips in there. It's supposed to come out looking like a cookie, right? What did you forget to put in there? In your own personal life, what are you forgetting? Ask the questions. Question the answers. All we ever want is to hear the authentic voice in our hearts. 99% of us were listening to our monsters. Ask the questions. Question the answers. I'm Errol, and that's Vocal Defrag.